Hello, Facebook Live. Hopefully you're having a wonderful evening, having some family time here. Um, just got back from yoga a little bit. But as people join in, love to know three things you are grateful for, or maybe three things that are great that happened today uh, in your life or business. Um, tonight, we just wanted to share something about that that's really remarkable and useful when it comes to um, when, when it comes to any partnerships, whether it's a business partnership, a friendship, a relationship. Uh, the, knowing your role and, and knowing the I guess rules you have in that role are really, really, really important. We're going to dive into that a little bit tonight, just real quick. Um, but as you're joining in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Love to know where you're where you're tuning in from. Uh, maybe three things that went great today that you're proud of or excited about. And uh, I see the numbers coming, so welcome, welcome, welcome as they're growing. Now, as you're tuning in and saying hello this evening, love to know where you're tuning in from and what you're grateful for or three things great that happened today. Uh, but what we're talking about is partnerships, and we're talking about what is your role. And my, my wife and I went and interviewed a handful of couples that have – had different ways they came together. Some fell in love at a young age and have been together forever. Some uh, were previously married and then split and then found each other and became a new couple and got married. Some have been married forever and they never worked together. Some got married and then always worked together. And we, we found these couples in all different positions, but we were looking for people. David from Boston, how are you? We were looking for people who've been together significantly Period, a significant period of time. And the other thing we started to look for is people who've worked together. Because my wife and I work together, and we wanted to know what are some insights that these people might have about relationships, about working together, about life. And so we started interviewing different couples and people all over. And one thing stood out that was really, really remarkable, but it made so much sense once we heard it. And it was so applicable in so many other areas of life once you understood the concept. And so if, if you're on here, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from and uh, maybe three things that happened great today. Thomas, nice to see you, Cleveland, Ohio. Elise from Istanbul, Turkey, grateful. Like it's awesome, nice to see you. Got some great people tuning in from all over the world, it looks like. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'd uh, love to know where you're tuning in from and maybe three things great that happened today. Um, and, and what we're talking about tonight is, is knowing your role. So we interviewed all these couples, and there was one couple that stood out that sh shared this piece of advice with us. And they said, listen, if you want to skip 80% of the arguments, 80% of the headaches, 80% of all the stuff that lands up um, feeling frustrating, Lauren, good to see you from New Jersey. Welcome. Um, it, it, they said, if you want to skip through all the junk that happens, they said one of the major, major lessons that took us a, a while to learn, but once we got it, oh, it smoothed things out, it is sitting down in the beginning. And this could be a business partnership, this could be a relationship, uh, but you know, a serious one, one that's going to last and one that, that's real and, and has some depth to it, not just dating, obviously. But they said one thing that's so, so, so useful is sitting down. And with a pen and paper, writing out what are all of the roles and responsibilities that exist. And, and I asked them, I said, what are examples? They said, well, when we work together, uh, Kristen, good to see you from Tampa. Um, they, they said, you know, when we work together, we sat down and said, okay, there's accounting, there's customer service, there's sales, there's managing the, the numbers and the books. And they said, we just, we just listed all the roles, all the things that have to happen. And I said, well, does this apply in your personal relationship at home? They said, absolutely it does. I think it's Angel and, or Angeli from Hong Kong. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Um, and, and they said, does this apply to your personal life? They said, absolutely. Think about it at home. You know, who's in charge of um, fixing stuff if something breaks around the house? Who's in charge of decorating? Who's in charge of the bills? Who's in charge of... Um, the, the landscaping, who's in charge of keeping certain things taken care of or wear and tear. Thomas, good to see you. They said, who's in charge of building things or creating things? Who's in charge of um, family, you know, dinners, times, win meetings, get-togethers? And, and they started listing all the general things that happen 
both at business and at home, this couple having to work together. And they said, what happened so often was we wouldn't think about the things that have to happen and something would come up, Adam, great to see you. And when something would come up, one of us would assume the other person was supposed to handle it. So something breaks at the house and she would assume, well, he's the man, he's supposed to handle it. And he would assume, you know, it's, it's your, you're in charge of the house, therefore you should handle it. And what would happen is these assumptions would cause this frustration underneath the skin that people didn't even realize. Hey, Yali, good to see you. Um, so it causes frustration underneath the skin based on assumptions of what one partner thought the other partner should be doing. And, and they said that the, the piece that really threw them off is they never, ever, ever, one, wrote down all the options and possibilities of things that do happen or, or possible things that need to be taken care of. So um, a, a simple list that, that they told us was, like, you know, at work, accounting, sales, finance, um, customer service, just simple things. And it makes sense in an office setting. And, and they said, once we narrow down the positions that are open and what tasks and responsibilities that position owns, then we decided who takes ownership of the position. Now, it makes sense. If, you're, if you have a, a business you own or run or a team you manage, obviously, you divvy up the position. You, you decide who's in charge of what. Uh, Carrie, nice to see you. And, and then it, it's that person's job or duty to take responsibility for those tasks. Uh, I, I think my wife and I found this out uh, the interesting way is even after they shared that with us, we went, oh, great idea. And, and like many people who might listen in, we didn't do it right away. And, and we landed up being in positions where something would happen, and I'd look at her, and she'd look at me, and we'd both go, did you do it? And we'd both expect that the other person did it because we thought or assumed that th that was their responsibility. And what we started learning was, wow, number one, if I could take away anything when it comes to creating powerful relationships, assumptions kill the relationship. So that the first thing is never assume someone else is supposed to or has to or is responsible for something. Instead, ask, voice it, communicate, start a conversation about it, even if it's something totally lame and simple. And they go, yeah, obviously, totally okay. At least bring it up the moment you feel it. Because if you don't, it'll fester and build and turn into something that you assume they thought or felt or should have, would have, could have handled. And then it gets frustrating over time. So one, never assume. Two, take some time to just take out a pen and paper and write down what are all the positions available, even if it's just in your relationship at home. Um, taking care of the kids, taking care of each other, buying gifts, uh, cooking, cleaning, um, building things, fixing things, uh, designing things, decorating things, just all kinds of random stuff that happens around the house. And once you have the list of all the options, maybe group them together so there's not 10,000 things that have to get done. But if you made maybe 10 positions at home and you grouped little tasks into these positions, then, then sit down with your, your significant other or your partner and, and, and say, listen, who's going to be in charge of which ones? Now, here's the second piece that goes with it. Not only who's in charge of which pieces or which activities or which roles, the second piece is when are you in charge of those things? Because here's what's crazy. Uh, let's say that you travel a lot like we do. If one person's home and the other person's away and something has to happen and the other person says, well, I'm not in charge of that, you are. Now it's going to be kind of awkward if you're out of town and something that needs to get done immediately has to get done and you're not there to do it. And, and they feel it's your responsibility. Now frustration builds again, upset, that, that assumption of, oh, you should have done this before you left feeling versus, oh, no problem. Here's our pop fly rule. When you're on the road or when something's happening, no problem. I pick up the slack. I make it happen. So hopefully this is useful. Uh, we were just thinking about good topics to talk about. If you have any big questions you want us to answer or think fo things you want to focus on in these little conversations, we'd love to know. Uh, but, but we were laughing tonight just because of how simple of a thought this is, yet how powerful it can be for, for couples, for business partners, for, for so many people dealing in relationships to just sit down, take out a pen and paper, write down all the roles that exist, um, you know, just, just outline what's available, and then to divvy up the responsibilities and really take ownership. That means if they own it, 
it gets done, and if it doesn't, they were the one in charge, and they were the one who took ownership and responsibility for it. The other thing that happens that I would say is a huge breakdown in any relationship or partnership is the blame game. When someone takes responsibility or says they're going to take responsibility, doesn't deliver, and then blames the other person, that becomes a huge fundamental breakdown in any relationship or partnership. Um, so jot those pieces down, nail them out, uh, figure out who's in charge of what, and, and take ownership and have some fun with this. Hopefully this is useful for everyone out there. Kelly, good to see you from Toronto. Things you are grateful for. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hopefully we get to meet you in person and your family this weekend when we're up there. Uh, anyways, hope you all have a wonderful evening. We're going to go watch something funny and enjoy ourselves. Um, and I'll, I'll see you all later. If you know someone who's struggling in a relationship or struggling with this concept in their business partnership, please tag them in this or share it with them. Uh, it's a very useful concept. It's very simple, um, but, but it's very effective as well. Have a great night, everyone.